Just a quick reminder here everyone that starting tomorrow, October 4th, and then every day until October 9th, I'll be live streaming the Battlefront 2 beta over on Twitch from 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 3 p.m., and then again from 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. I'll put a link to the channel in the description, but my Twitch screen name is SWRC Gaming. We're gonna have a ton of fun playing the new game, but the Twitch streams are always a great way to talk all things Star Wars, so I hope to see you there. I would just also quickly mention that I'll be putting a lot of gameplay footage all week on my gaming channel, which is called Star Wars Gaming Club. But again, a link to the Twitch and gaming channels will be down in the description below. And with that, I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and I look forward to seeing you on Twitch. Thanks everyone! Since the release of The Force Awakens Visual Dictionary with Episode 7, we've known that there exists a connection between Phasma's armor and Emperor Palpatine. However, the details in the Visual Dictionary were extremely minimal, stating only that Phasma's armor was coated in chromium that was salvaged from a Naboo yacht previously owned by Palpatine, thereby serving as a symbol of power from the Imperial Era. But with the release of the new Star Wars Phasma novel by Delilah S. Dawson, we now have some of the specifics of how Phasma was able to obtain the armor that shared a unique connection with the former Emperor. In this video expose, I will outline these specifics and describe the connections between Phasma's armor and Palpatine. Please note that this video will contain spoilers for Phasma, so spoiler warning for all those who are still making their way through the novel. Born on the devastated and virtually uninhabitable planet of Parnassos, Phasma was engaged in a constant struggle for survival, whether it be from the harshness of the planet itself, or the other tribes on the planet similarly fighting to survive. However, more than a decade before the events of The Force Awakens, Phasma saw a starship plummeting towards the surface after being shot down by long-standing turret placements. As we and Phasma would come to learn, the starship contained General Brendel Hux of the First Order, the father of General Armitage Hux as seen in Episode 7. Further, it was confirmed by a resistant spy in the novel that the starship that crashed on Parnassos was indeed one of Emperor Palpatine's favorite yachts while on the Boo, which had fallen into the hands of Brendel upon the remnant of the Empire traveling into the Unknown Regions following the Battle of Jakku. Eventually, recognizing that Brendel was her means of finally escaping the hellish environment of Parnassos, Phasma first located Brendel, who survived through an escape pod, and then set out to locate the starship to contact the First Order fleet for rescue. After an extremely long and deadly trek through the harshest terrains of the planet, Phasma and Brendel were finally able to reach the starship, contact the First Order, and be rescued from Parnassos. But given the fact that Brendel and Phasma didn't attempt to salvage the yacht that had previously belonged to Palpatine when they escaped from Parnassos, how did Phasma end up with enough chromium to cover the entirety of her First Order armor? One year after being rescued by General Brendel Hux and taken to join the ranks of the First Order to eventually become a captain, Phasma returned to Parnassos with the intention of creating her unique armor. After finally locating the chrome-covered yacht, which by then had been completely covered in sand, Phasma spent hours removing enough chrome plating from the starship to create her armor. But although she had the chrome plating that she wanted, Phasma wasn't finished with her former planet. She then traveled to a facility that was previously owned by the Constar Mining Corporation, the corporation that played a significant role in the devastation and poisoning of the planet roughly two centuries earlier. During her journey with Brendel the prior year to locate the starship, Phasma became aware of the fact that Constar had a number of stations across Parnassos that assisted the corporation carry out a specific task. For example, one station made the uniforms for the workers of Constar, while another station was dedicated to making mining equipment. It was this latter station, also known as Clio Station, that Phasma sought out next. This was because Clio Station contained a specific machine capable of carrying out a replicating process. In order to create her new chrome-coated armor, Phasma placed every plate of chromium she obtained from Palpatine's former yacht and placed it into the machine's smelting chamber. 
She then placed the entirety of her First Order Stormtrooper armor into the machine's scanning chamber, until every piece had been coded. At that point, the machine replicated the entire set of armor, but this time made of chromium taken from the starship. Phasma then put on her new armor, leaving behind her standard issue kit on the floor of Cleo Station, and left Parnassos to rejoin the First Order fleet. So there we have it! How Phasma obtained her chrome armor and its connection to Palpatine. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For the Imperialists!